It's always really nice to be back with the same people, but doing a completely different show. I, I feel like we get to reinvent the wheel every time we return. We leave off season three with the precipice of war. And when we return this season, the war has passed and we're dealing with its aftermath. From the beginning, from the first season, we knew that we wanted to tell a story with great scope. We liked the idea that each season would have its own arena, its own kind of age. We were looking for an extremely iconic and also large scale environment that could really open a season. And Jennifer Dunn, the location manager, and I discussed that maybe Hoover Dam could be a wonderful opportunity. When we knew that we were gonna get Hoover Dam as a location, we wanted to get to see it in all its glory and there's a really, really fun opening prologue. We love the idea that it would have been repurposed, sold off, taken over by a different organization for a very different purpose. Kind of getting the reality of the data universe in which we live, all of these companies, Google, Facebook, all of them require an enormous amount of power. We had a sequence where there's a bunch of flies, and so there's fly wranglers, and you have to make sure the flies are all taken care of. No flies were harmed in the making of this show, but we do have them for reference because we can use the actual fly there or overtake with CG element, uh, CG fly. Anytime we can use a real element in frame, it's always the most helpful tool. It really is sort of a humbling idea in terms of free will, right? How much of who we are really is free and how much of it is something else, something unseen that's kind of acting on us. Yeah! Seven years have passed since the end of the previous season. So we find our characters in some cases in radically different circumstances, but for Caleb, the situation hasn't changed very much. We find him right back where he started at the beginning of the third season. He's haunted by his past, and so he just cannot shake the feeling that he is being followed. He can't shake the feeling that the war isn't really over. It was important for us to really show the patina this year as we entered into what was our present day in season three. So you start to see the emergence of graffiti as exposed on the exterior of his house. There's weeds, there's a little bit worse for wear. And I think similar to the look of his face, you know, a bit more gaunt, a bit more unshaven, unkempt. And it's the world he thought he wanted, but he doesn't quite seem happy. I'm beginning to think it's not that you fear war, it's that you miss it. Maeve, on the other hand, when we find her, is kind of in, you know, self-imposed exile in the middle of nowhere. We had spent a lot of time scouting, you know, doing snow studies and looking at different areas based on aesthetically what we were looking for and ultimately ended up in Big Bear. When we find her at the beginning of the season, she's alone and living in her memories and causes quite a chain reaction, which brings her back to fight yet another battle. It's always a fun sort of little thing when you can see the host from other seasons come back. Who sent you, Colonel Brigham? Who the fuck is that? I'm afraid I don't have the patience to explain. And then there's Dolores. Well, actually, there's not Dolores, because Dolores is dead and doesn't exist anymore. Christina is a human. She's a video game designer at a company called Olympiad Entertainment. She works in the offices, so she's in a lot of suits and more professional kind of looks. That's very sleek and clean, with nods to the color that we've seen her in before, her Dolores blue, just a little bit. But we really aimed to find things that just pulled her forward into the future. To really get a sense that our story had moved on, had moved kind of into the heart of humanity, it felt like Manhattan was the right place to be. We added a lot of futurism in terms of the landscape and the backgrounds, added some buildings, and I think evolved the city in a direction that it will likely go in. We added parks in all of the streets, leaving only one lane open for ride shares. We turned parking lots into rideshare parking stations and started to really kind of adjust some of the pre-war buildings into some future. Shooting in New York is a pretty intense thing to pull off. It's a bustling city that doesn't stop for anyone, even if you have a camera. 
they'll walk in front of your camera. <laughs> we shot on the High Line. The High Line is never shut down for any kind of private reason, so we're shooting amongst the public the whole time. Before we started shooting the second season, I sat down with Jonah and Lisa, and they kind of told me what was in store for me in season two, how that would end. And they said, you're going to go away for a little while, and but we're going to hold you as a little secret for down the line. It was really hard to keep the Teddy secret, but I didn't even tell my family. It's an exciting feeling knowing that this is going to be a little uh, fun reveal for the audience and for the fans.